you guys, so we are super excited to uh, show you what we have going on this week. Last week you've already seen we went up to Millennial Acres Farms and I was like a kid in the candy store with all the cool chickens and different things they have up there. And one of the very generous things they did as well was give us some silky eggs to try and hatch in our new incubator that we've got. So we've got this jumble tabletop incubator and we're gonna show you how to set that up and uh, incubate our silky eggs. And it will do anywhere from sort of 12 to 35 eggs depending on the bird type. So it will do quail eggs, duck eggs, chicken eggs. It'll just sort of vary on uh, how many you can fit in by the size of the eggs. So we're gonna get going and set it up and show you what to do. One thing that I also wanna mention that they uh, recommend that, that you do when you get first get your incubator, we highly recommend it as well, is just to sort of try it out at first and do a test run for, for 24 hours, just to make sure it's working before you put your fertile eggs in. So we sacrificed two of our chicken eggs last night to try it out that aren't fertile, but we put them in there, placed them in, made sure this was connected properly and that it was rotating the eggs as it should be and that the temperature was staying at the right level for 24 hours. And we kind of marked the top of them so we could see that they were rotating properly and uh, just to make sure that's working because you don't want to lose your eggs and put them all, all your eggs in one basket, as they say. So make sure you test it out, make sure it's running properly uh, for at least 24 hours and before you put your real eggs in there. So we're gonna get everything set up with our incubator. We've got it assembled, which was actually super easy to do. You just kind of plug one thing into the cap to set up the turner. All we're gonna do now is get uh, some water into the center ring for the humidity there. So the first step here is we have our bottom tray of the incubator and you can see it's got the different slides that are kind of in there. That is how you'll determine your humidity. We only want it 45 to 55% for the chicken eggs that we're doing. So we're only going to fill this middle ring here with water. So if you want to increase the humidity, you would add more water to the outer rings depending on what type of bird that you're doing. So we're just going to very gently try and fill that up in there. It's a little bit gotten to the outside one, it's not a big deal. But that is generally the amount of water that you want. Now we're going to put our base tray in there that our slider is going to sit on. And that's just gonna slide in here. So you can see here that these are adjustable, so you can take those out, make them bigger or smaller. If you had smaller quail legs, you can put them in there and do a lot more. Uh, or for ours, we kind of pre-measured it, and that's the size that we want them for our silky eggs. And what's gonna happen when we put the top on, there's a little bar that comes down and is gonna slide into here. And then that's just gonna automatically rotate your eggs. So it's just gonna slide back and forth every couple of hours just to rotate your eggs. So let's get our eggs in there. So these are our silky eggs. You see they've been labeled on there. S for silky and April 22nd was their hatch date. So we're two days after that. So within lots of time to get them into the incubator. And we're just going to lay them in there like so. And we have nine that we're going to do today. And I'll just show you. So then you can see sort of as that rotator goes, it's gonna rotate those eggs like that so they're not always on the same axis every couple of hours there. So we're gonna fill up three of these with our nine eggs. And this is super exciting to be able to do our own eggs. Eventually we'd like to do these with quail. So it'll be an exciting test to see how this goes. And so honestly, that's it. We're just gonna add the top part, uh, plug it in and do the settings and that will rotate like that. So we've got the top part now and that's uh, super easy to assemble as well. All we have to do is clip in this little plastic piece and that's the sort of bit that's just going to slide down between that and make sure that that rotates along there. So when you put it on you just want to make sure that that fits into that part. Just going to slide that into there and that is in there. Now one thing that we did figure out last night which was great that we did a trial is this looks like it's on but you want to press down on it. So if you have this model, make sure it's down. You almost hear a little bit of a click when that pops into place. Because when we did that before, when it rotated, that piece popped out and didn't quite uh, slide it along properly. So make sure that clicks down into place. That is in the slot, uh, in the slider there. So now all we have to do is plug it in and set the temperature. Okay, so we've got that plugged in and running. And so that will run at 45 to 55 humidity and we set the temperature there. You want your temperature for hens is between 99.3 and 99.6. So we've got that set on that temperature there. And one of the other really cool features that you can use is it has a built-in candling system on there. So you don't want to do that in the first six days because there won't be much to see and you can damage the embryo as well with the light. But eventually you can turn this little light on and uh, after six days you can put that in there. The lights will have to be out for this to work but you'll be able to kind of look inside and see through the egg and uh, see the development of your embryos, make sure that they're developing properly as well. So um, after six days, you can do that and check that out. So these will be in here for 21 days now. And uh, hopefully when that is all done, we will have 
hatch silkies, and we will hopefully have nine more of these cute little guys here. Our cute little silky chick. Hi. Yeah. You want to go back with your friends, don't you? All right, guys. We will uh, continue to check back in at different points throughout the incubation period. Um, I don't know how well it will show up on camera, but we'll try and show you what we do for candling um, after six days. And we will definitely check back in for the hatching as well. Hi guys, so we are uh, now on day three that our eggs are being uh, incubated. So we're just gonna do a quick check-in. And then we also had some recommendations from people on our Facebook group and online to uh, add an extra thermometer, as well as a hygrometer, which measures uh, humidity. So we have the sort of system with that comes with the incubator of what trays to fill for what humidity, but um, this will give us a more accurate reading as well. So all we're gonna do is open this up. The water level still looks pretty good in there. We'll have to add water uh, at some point. Um, but we're just going to stick both of these inside so we can kind of monitor the temperature as a double check for the temperature uh, as well as the humidity just to make sure that that's going as correct as well. So I don't want to put them down in there because then it will stop the tray sliding. So just sitting right on top there should work. We've got this unplugged so we'll get this back in right away. On day six or seven, I think we'll do uh, the candling for the first time, which is what we were talking about um, with the LED light that we'll put them on top there and make sure that the eggs are developing like they're supposed to. So we're going to quickly get this plug back in and we'll check in uh, next time when we're going to do the candling. Hi guys, it's been 12 days since we put our silky eggs in the incubator. So today we are going to be candling eggs. Um, if you watched uh, previous episodes when we went to Millennial Acres Farms, we got Martha to teach us how we were candling eggs. But if you haven't seen that, what we are going to be doing is um, using this little light on our incubator, uh, putting our silky eggs on top of the light. If light passes through, then unfortunately the egg didn't take and there won't be a baby that um, hatches from that but if the light does not pass through then there that means that there is a little baby starting in there so uh, we're going to be turning off all the lights so we can see it better I feel like I should be telling you yeah, a ghost <laughs> I was just gonna say the blue light on your face so you look like a ghost is talking so I'm gonna start left to right and we're just gonna put place each one on and as you can see, or maybe not, <laughs> um, there is no light passing through this egg. So that means that there is a little baby chicken there so far. So that's a good one, great sign. So as you can see with this egg, there is a little bit of light passing through at the bottom. I'm not quite sure if um, it's still developing or if possibly it was a egg that didn't catch but we will keep that one inside our incubator and maybe just check back on it um, because it's not a lot of light that's passing through it almost looks like it's just at the bottom so we'll keep an eye on that one and we'll try our next one this one also has no light passing through which is an amazing sign another little baby in there and this one is similar with um, not the last one but the one before where there is a little bit of light uh, passing through at the bottom. You can see the veins very, very slightly throughout. So we're going to also leave this one and maybe check in on it. We might even mark the two that, that we're seeing this with. Yeah, this one as well. And they're all just at the bottom, so I'm not too sure if that's normal or what's happening there. We'll have to look into that a bit. Um, it could mean that they're still developing maybe, my hopes. Same with this one as the other ones. There's just a little bit of light passing through in the bottom there. Same in the bottom here. This one, the light is passing through uh, quite a bit more. So I think that's a pretty good sign that this one didn't catch, which is quite sad. But yeah, you can see quite the difference of how much light is passing through, which makes me wonder about the other ones. If maybe they got a little bit farther into the development or if those ones are okay, we'll have to wait and see. And our last one, this one is quite a bit of light passing through on that side. Not fully, but yeah. Well, hopefully the ones with a little bit are still okay. Otherwise, we don't have too many. What, two that are two. fully? Two. Is that all of them? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to pop the lights back on. Um, we do have three runner duck eggs that are also in our incubator right now. 
We're gonna wait a little bit longer to candle those because I don't think they're quite ready yet, but we'll definitely check back in with you guys when we do end up candling those. Um, as for the silky eggs, I'm really curious to find out if the ones that were semi had light passing through, um, if those end up taking, but only time will tell, I guess. Find out. We'll find out. We'll message uh, Shandell and then we'll like this and see what she says. Yeah. Maybe a Google search too. <laughs> Hi guys, so excitement uh, around the house today. We have our incubator and we've kind of got the first stage of the chicks that are hatching here. So we did a little research after we filmed the last segment and uh, talked to Millennial Acres again. And apparently with a little bit of light shining through at the bottom, uh, as long as most of it is opaque, that is fine. So all those ones are happy and healthy. So um, I think hopefully eight of our nine eggs will all hatch, but we'll know in the next 36 hours because once they start um, that's kind of the time period that they all should be hatching within and they all hatch at the same time so um, you can see we'll zoom in a little bit and show you the egg you're not really gonna be able to see too well filming through the dome of the incubator but we will keep filming uh, as they hatch and try and capture that as much as we can for you um, as they hatch over the next little bit so we'll post a picture of what it looks like too so the first um, little crack is actually called a pip how cute is that and so they, they have actually a temporary appendage on the end of their beak um, that's like a, I think they call it a tooth even, um, that they use to break through the shell for, this, for the first part, which is kind of a neat fact, I had no idea. But yeah, temporary beak tooth that they use to poke through the shell. So anywho, we'll zoom in, we'll try and show you, but again, we'll post a picture um, to kind of give you a better idea of what that looks like, um, as you're not going to be able to see very well through, through the dome there with the glare of the lights on it. Here we go. So we filmed last night that uh, our first egg had pipped and our first little crack was coming through and they very slowly started hatching but we woke up this morning. Just one of these little guys. Hey buddy. You look so sleepy, you look like I do. So he's the first one out. There was another egg that was uh, rolling around a bit in there but then tips on one or two of the other ones, but uh, hopefully the rest will start uh, hatching now too. So we've got our one little guy that hatched in the back there already, and then we've got this egg in the middle there. You can see it's happening. It's broken in half, and this little muffin is ready to come out. You got this, baby. And it's so tempting to like want to help them, but you're not supposed to open it or do that, but it's so like hard not to. Yeah? And you can see, you can get a better view of that actually now. That little dot on the egg to the left of that, that is what the pip looks like, the first little break in the egg. And so you can see that kind of membrane on the inside of the egg. And so that's why you don't want to open that up, because if that part dries out, it's super hard for them to get through. Can Push. Yeah, look. Yes, oh, oh my god. That's so cool. Yes, go, go, go. Oh my god. Oh, stretch. Look at his little head, oh my god. He's just like laying on his back relaxing. You did it. Aww. Hi guys, so uh, we showed you a little bit earlier that our, uh, our second Silky was hatching and kind of showed you a little bit of that and we've now run into a bit of a dilemma. Um, it's been about 24 hours since the first one started hatching um, and for our incubator you have to manually add water into it and our humidity is dropping uh, pretty low so it's almost at 40% and uh, generally you want between 45 and 55 and probably even a little bit higher while they're hatching so they can break through that membrane. So, we have two silkies that have hatched, there's a couple other that have pipped, um, and still one or two that we think is still going to hatch that hasn't pipped yet, so we think we've still got a decent amount of time left. So, 
I think we're in a choice or in a position where we don't have a choice but to open this up, um, take these silkies out, add some water, um, and let it keep going. Otherwise, it's going to be too dry for the other ones to make it out. So whether that's a 100% correct thing to do, I don't know, but that's what we're going to roll with. Um, so I'm going to very quickly take the top off, lift out the two silkies that have hatched and get them into our tub there to go under uh, a heat lamp with some food and water and uh, add some more water in to get the humidity back up for the rest of them that still have to hatch. And one of the things that's suggested if you ever have to do this is to give a quick spray to the eggs, uh, just get a quick spritz of water just so they don't let that membrane dry out because as I said earlier it does dry out very very fast even within kind of 20 or 30 seconds. So I'm going to try and do this carefully but uh, as efficiently as I can. So here we go. We'll zoom in on the chicks after but this is going to be a kind of quick one, two, three. Okay, here we go. Hi my face, hi my face. Oh my gosh, they're so tiny. They are so tiny. Hi, hi, hi. There you go. A little bit of water in. Spray to the other ones. And back on. That was pretty good, I feel like. And look at these little muffins. This is the youngest chick that I have ever held. Why? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> What's so funny? The youngest chick. I know what your dirty mind is thinking. I'm sure my friends will have some comments on that too. Aren't ya? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Hi. Okay, should we get you under some heat and get you some food and water? Yeah. I don't know which was the first one, but one of them has been sitting in there for, uh, God, what? 12 hours already at least? No, longer than that. 16 hours last night. So we just wanted to show you guys the size difference on how much smaller the incubated ones were that just hatched. So um, obviously they're less than, uh, less than a day old. And the ones on the other side there are now only four days old. So still incredibly young. But just the, uh, the difference in size in that amount of time. And again, silkies are a band, bantam breed, the other ones are turkeys, uh, as well as broiler chickens, um, and some Plymouth barred rocks, so they're generally bigger birds as well, but um, that's just crazy in four days how much they've grown. All right, so we got those two chicks out earlier. It's been about another kind of six hours now, and our third egg is starting to poke through. And sorry, we gotta turn the lighting off because the glare off the uh, dome there makes it a little hard to see in, so this isn't going to be the best for you, but you can kind of see another egg cracking there. Yeah, it's got like a little bit of blood looking stuff on it, so I'm not sure if that's normal or not, but uh, yeah, this guy's poking through and we'll keep you posted as the third one comes out. There's a fourth one that has a pip in it, um, and we can't see any pips on any of the other ones, but they could be on the bottom underneath as well, so um, hopefully those ones will start soon as well, too. So it is about another 12 hours later now and this front left egg is still struggling a bit. You can see that other guy is nice and dried off, but he's starting to make some progress on this front egg and that top part sticking out is actually his beak now. So that will hopefully encourage him to kind of move along and keep going. But the membrane's broken, which is good as well. So uh, he's making progress, but it's been a long effort for him. He's going to be exhausted. I'm happy he's at least going to be able to breathe well and Keep going, buddy.
Okay, so it has been a long 24 hours, and I don't know if we're doing things wrong or everything's just kind of compounding and we're having bad luck. Um, rather than try and zoom in with the camera, we'll show you some pictures as I'm talking. Um, we've kind of been showing you some updates on that egg where they broke, broke it through the membrane, um, but the chick still hasn't been able to get out, and that has been over 24 hours now, not just since the pit, but since it started breaking the shell. So we think the membrane's dried, it's broken all the way around, but still isn't getting out. Um, so we're going to pull that egg and assist it, which isn't something you generally want to do, um, but we feel like it's, it's slowing down and starting to give up, so we're gonna try and do it. Um, it's broken all the way around, so the blood supply to the membrane um, should have stopped, which means it's not gonna kind of bleed to death, which is one of the risks uh, if you try and assist a chick with hatching. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is one of the chicks that is hatched has already been in there for 24 hours and is now stuck upside down. So we're gonna take him out that's been in there for 24 hours. Uh, and our third problem is, is that half of an eggshell from an egg that is hatched has kind of worked itself away around the outside of another shell um, and where it's pipped is kind of right on the edge of that. So we're not sure if it's gonna be able to break through that part as well. So um, we're gonna get this chick out, get the eggshells out, um, bring the egg we're going to assist out and quickly spray with water again and get that done as fast as we can and then we'll show you um, assisting the chick which we again don't know how it's going to go but um, here we go one two three i think i got it here we go old eggs so this is the one that that old eggshell oh no it's kind of hardened on there so that old eggshell hardened right around that egg so you know what I'm not gonna you can see that's where he's pipped and that egg is kind of hardened around that one now so I'm not gonna mess with that too much and see how that does this is the one we're gonna assist and this is the little guy hi buddy we're gonna go put in with the other ones a quick spray get the humidity up a bit again in there it's been up where we want it it's kind of at 65 and you want it up about 65 or 70 when they're hatching so I don't know, we don't want this thing turning anymore, so that doesn't matter if it goes back on. This is so weird now, I feel like I'm doing surgery and I've never done a surgery before and I have no idea what I'm doing. You don't but, say you've never done a surgery before? Well, rocket science, brain surgery. So you can see there he is, um, with his little beak right there. So he's been breathing, um, but the other chick that was in there had already started pecking at him too, because he's been in there for... God, 28, 30 hours, so I think he was getting hungry, so um, I just want to feel, yeah, so that membrane got really, really hard, so we're just going to carefully start pulling things away, and hopefully that membrane that has the blood supply, um, has stopped this guy. come out and this is the one that we thought looked a little bit red in the beginning anyways so I'm not sure if there is a pre-existing problem okay, I'm going to need a skin in there hi buddy and that I mean there you can see that's the wrist there is those blood vessels in that inside membrane so if those were still running, that could cause the chick to bleed to death if he was still connected to those. And you pulled this off and severed that, then he could potentially bleed out. So that's one of the reasons that you don't want to do this. I'm gonna try and get this big piece off. make it but he's out and I don't think we did a lot of damage to him so let's just see 
seem fine a lot of times when this happens you'll kind of notice they don't develop as well as the other ones and are weaker but uh, it was getting to the point where I feel like he was going to give up getting out of that and that shell has been in that state for and if you look at that first video we took of it that was over 25 hours ago so, so yeah he's in there he's out we'll, uh, we'll see how he does Hi guys, so another update for you this morning. We are going to do all the things they tell you not to do. And we'll explain why. We're gonna open up the incubator again. Um, since we last showed you the guy that we kind of helped uh, open up the shell with that was struggling, um, he's now been back in there for over 12 hours. Um, and we think after kind of struggling in there for almost two days, he's probably hungry and thirsty. So we're gonna take him out and also had one more hatch last night. Um, so we have two chicks in there now that we're gonna take out and put with the other ones. But uh, this whole hatching process, um, not just since the first pip, but since the first one kind of broke through the shell, has been about four days now, which I don't think is very common. So um, I'm not sure if it's something we did during the incubation period or that's just kind of how this worked out. But um, yeah, so we're gonna take those two out. We also have the one that's sort of pipped through that still has that other eggshell stuck around it from the, an earlier bird hatching. So that one's still in there and he's struggling to get through now as well. Um, because he now has a second dried shell and a second dried membrane kind of wrapped around where he's trying to break through. So we're going to try and do a little impromptu surgery again and, and give him a little more breathing room and uh, let him get out a little bit easier. So we're going to do this really quickly again. So sorry if it's not the best filming, the best angles, but we kind of got to do it as fast as we can to uh, work on that egg, get these two chicks out and give it a quick spritz of water and close it back up. So here we go. Hi guys, you just stay right there for now while I do this. You can kind of see where he's broken through there on his line. Where the second shell is. So I don't know how much this is going to help. You can see that second membrane is dried right on top of there right now. I think, uh, I'm not sure if this is a common thing or not for that to happen, for the eggshells to dry on there, or it's just bad luck, but, but this shell is so dry, I don't think it's gonna come off. I just wanna give him a little bit of extra room to maybe make it easier for him to push through. I don't think this membrane's gonna come off because it's so dried on there, but. I don't want to really touch his inner membrane in case those blood vessels are still attached. Okay, so I think we're just going to leave him with that for now and get that back in there. Hello little muffins, welcome to the world. I'm going to put those there for now. We are going to spritz. That all dried out of it. We don't want it to dry, it. and we're gonna get that back on. Okay, here are our new little chickies. And the first one that was struggling doesn't look like he's been doing too bad. We've kind of been washing him in there, so it's like poop right on the shell. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You're toilet trained already. Let's put these guys in with the other ones. You go to meet all your sisters. We're hoping they're all girls. And we now have five that have hatched. So that's it for this week. We're gonna give you just a bit of a recap. The uh, first egg that we assisted is doing well. That one seems to be developing okay. We'll uh, continue to watch its development and see how it does. The second egg that we assisted that had an old egg shell that was stuck around his egg, um, that guy didn't make it unfortunately. We, uh, we didn't show you that, but we kind of took him out and opened it up a bit and uh, he clearly uh, hadn't made it. 
and we took the one egg out that we originally knew wasn't going to work uh, from candling that uh, didn't develop and then we still have two more in the incubator it's now day 23 so we're not uh, super optimistic those ones were fertile uh, and had developed we can tell that from candling but they have not pipped yet so we don't know if that just didn't happen or because we did what you're not supposed to do and opened it up to to assist the other ones or that caused them not to hatch so um, yeah they were fertile but haven't hatched yet and we're not optimistic so thanks for watching we hope uh, you found this week informative and uh, learned just as much as we did it was quite the experience uh, first time going through this so yeah we hope you enjoyed it if you did and you want to keep watching our videos hit subscribe below and we'll be back with our video next week